All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the ninth session of Tokyo Red. Uh, as you may notice, I don't have my webcam up today, and that would be because, yay, technical difficulties. Uh, but anyways, uh, if you're unfamiliar with Tokyo Red, this is our Cyberpunk Red tabletop role-playing game, and we've been going for, well, nine sessions. And if you want to play catch-up, you can find the VODs on my YouTube and most podcast solutions. Uh, other than that, I just have to say that uh, whatever support you can provide for the stream, whether it's a follow, sub, patron, donation, whatever, I greatly appreciate it. But since it's been a while, I think we're just going to go ahead and jump right into things. So as you may or may not know, we usually start off with some form of current event monologue. And for Tokyo Red, that means a screen sheet. So we're going to switch screens here. And McCall, if you could take it away. Japan Today, We're No Better Than Night City, by Soda Nakazo, Concerned Citizens from Akihabara, two hours ago. With all the details that have come out surrounding the murder of Lewis Walker, I think it's painfully obvious that something terrible has happened to our once proud country. There is absolutely no reason why the Tokyo police should have allowed a member of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to be killed. They keep telling us that the hostage situation was contained and de-escalating, and that Mr. Walker was killed by an unknown sniper. There's only so many sight lines that would have allowed such a shot, and all of them were either manned or covered by the TMPD, which leads me to the following conclusion. This was a hit, plain and simple. Someone paid off the TMPD and used the excuse of a hostage situation to slaughter Mr. Walker. Why? I don't know. But the fact this happened right out in the open and not a single arrest has been made in response, that screams corruption from all angles. We're supposed to be better than the lawless Night City, and yet here we are. I would call upon our Prime Minister to make an official statement and, comment, uh, to, uh, and commit to rooting out the corrupt individuals responsible for this heinous act. Show that you have a backbone for once in your career, and show that the world that ah, and show the world that Japan is above such things. Because if you don't, if you let such things continue as they are, then we might as well start letting Arasaka run things again without the facade. All right, very nice. And that is sort of where we're going to drop into things. Uh, for those who may not remember, I will remind you that our edge runners here were responsible for defusing and dealing with a tense hostage situation in their last sort of adventure. Uh, during that adventure, it was discovered that there was a Ministry of Foreign Affairs member, Lewis Walker, as was mentioned in the screen sheet. And it turned out that maybe there was a lot more going on. Maybe that Lewis Walker was the edge runner or not the edge runner, the net runner that was actually controlling the hostage takers. There was a lot of questions, a lot of unknowns that were going on. And the end result was, is that by the time the edge runners started to get answers, someone or something killed Lewis Walker before they could really get any definitive answers. So we're going to drop in uh, approximately two or three weeks after that event. Uh, the Edge Runners are currently on the rooftop of their apartment overlooking uh, their view into the greater Tokyo area. Now, this view is one that uh, is pretty commonplace for the cyberpunk era. You know, lots of tall buildings, lots of neon lights. Um, but this is a view that many would probably kill for. Uh, it's a very picturesque uh, bit of scenery. And for the moment, uh, it is just Akari, Xavier, Steel, and Airbags up on the roof. And you all are discussing some current event of your choosing. But I'm going to turn it over to you, and I'll bring in our new player as events warrant. Uh, I really, think, uh, got... really think you got what? Uh, I'm pretty sure I, had th I got this conspiracy down. See? Last time this happened, it was the corporations trying to regain the foot, their foothold into Japan politics, right? That has to be. Uh, I don't know. I was 
mostly out in the wilderness doing uh, personnel runs back then. Mm. Ah, shame. The UK was basically in uh, total anarchy at the time. As well. uh, Vancouver wasn't much better. Oh, well. I will tell you one thing I'm glad at, though. I'm glad the Yakuza at least paid for uh, Shogun's bill before they took all his stuff out of his apartment. Yeah. yeah. I don't suppose we're ever going to find out exactly what the deal with that was. Uh, nope. Trust me, B Bishop. Or trust me, Airbags. There's things you don't want to ask questions about when these guys are involved. Yeah. Yeah, they got a reputation. That's one thing I'm learning very quickly, is that it's always best to just keep your head down for a lot of this. Yeah, keep your head down, lay low, don't get caught. Don't get caught. I have been uh, having to talk with the Purple Tigers about getting a second vehicle that's a little less conspicuous. Uh, sort of not, nothing definite yet, but they haven't said no. That's a good start. Let me know if you need anything from the more official side as I sort of tap where my badge would be if I was carrying it. <laughs> uh, still weird being two doors down the down the corridor from a cop. Hey, part-time cop. Yeah, but that part-time can take yeah. quite a bit of time. I know, right? The paperwork has gone through the roof, but at least it's nice having a um, steady paycheck. Yes, steady income is always good to come across. And I will not complain about having at least some type of feeling that we're not all just criminals. <laughs> uh, speaking of not just, no, not quite criminals, how's your um, dive into the uh, armor uh, net systems coming along? <sighs> It's taking a while, a lot longer than I hoped for. Originally, my plan was to ask for the remains if one of the suits got destroyed, but, well, I guess fortunately for you guys that were wearing it, you didn't really get anything messed up, but still unfortunate that I didn't get any jump parts to look at. Not saying that I wanted you to nearly die or get destroyed or anything. Hmm. But it would definitely be easier for the... Or it'd definitely make the the department more willing to give the suit if it was already near inoperable than giving me a brand well, you know I try to step into enough line, lines of fire to get you what you want but the damn thing just keeps getting back up well I made a deal with them and uh, I don't want to keep the suit they're just personal projects take a while <laughs> Things take a long time, and a lot of resources, which I don't have currently. I really wish I still had my lab. <sighs> don't I know it. Well, maybe as part of your deal, you could get into the TMPD's lab from time to time. I think that would require me to officially join them like you did. I'd rather try avoiding that. Yeah, I know. But have you seen their Mark 7... Uh, plasma sa sauce? Those things are amazing. They are that. They I'm are. More I'm more interested in software, in their software. Yep. I've heard they really kicked to the left if you're not careful, though. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, their bite back's a bitch. It's just then, mid conversation, that from across the way, uh, there is a larger building with an actual soccer field on it. Uh, you hear shouting and you look up just in time to see a soccer ball flying over the uh, guard fence and flying in your general direction. And the good news is that I rolled low enough that all of you notice it before it hits one of you in the head. So you're able to catch the soccer ball pretty, pre uh, pretty easily. And the... Uh, the I'll call them hooligans, but they're really just people playing soccer. They just sort of shout, hey, can you throw it back? Yeah. Are they like on a lower level or up high? Uh, they're a little bit above you. Uh, I would say maybe about uh, a, a gap of 
we'll say 20 feet and maybe five feet up. Okay, so doable if you've got a good throwing arm. Mm-hmm. I'll try to huck it. All righty. Let's see what to have you roll for this. Because, you know, I'm just trying to ease everyone back into rolling. Uh, let's have you do an athletics for me. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Well, uh, first roll of the night, ladies and gents. First roll of the uh, the the new year, and we're already at negative one. This this is a, <laughs> this is a good start. Maybe I should not be the one that first <laughs> rolls ever. ever. So, so I'm thinking you hit the guardrail of our building. Yeah. So I think what happened. Well, uh, I'll, let me ask this: Would you rather flavor it, or would you like me to flavor it? Oh, I go to huck it, and it just like lands right in front of me, and go, "Well, dang." <laughs> So, the, so the you know one of the the soccer players like you know comes up over the edge and says, "Hey, uh, are you are you gonna throw it over? What, what's going on?" I just hand it over to Akari. Apparently, I can't throw today. I'm just gonna nudge and say, Xavier, if you need help reconfiguring your arms, um, dexterity systems, please let me know, and then I will try to throw it back. Athletics, please. Yes, indeed. And I would love if this was another critical one. Just a comedy of errors. A 13. Yeah, with a 13, you throw it back easily enough. And the person on the other side catches it and says, Hey, thanks. And they disappear from view. And it's right about then that uh, all of you hear the door to the rooftop open. And out steps a new individual. One that some of you, well, most of you anyway, haven't really seen before. And I'm going to let Pinkett describe their character. Oh, uh, one sec here. She's uh, about... Uh, i got to pull up her bio real quick so I don't uh, fuck up an Indian. Uh, um, she's about like five foot six, dark black hair. She has tattoos on her face. I just like flick. Yeah, I was going to say you went a little bit robot there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh. I completely hit my mic, Oops. and that just... Oops. Yeah, sorry. Um, she's about five foot six. She's got tattoos on her face, dark black hair, goes down to her about her shoulders. Uh, she has blue eyes, piercings on her. Her ears are pierced multiple times through. She's pretty normal, not a lot of uh, integration, just standard human. She walks out. I'm just going to give a quick side eye to everyone else, and everybody will just give a shrug. He's like, well, I don't know. I'll stand up, and you must be the new person. You must be the new person here. I guess. Uh, hi, I'm Glyph. Ikari, uh, de facto manager of this building, apparently. Eh, at least until they get the new guy in. I'm airbags. That's steel. Uh, Xavier is over there fiddling with his arm. What's wrong with his arm? Apparently they forgot to load in the soccer ball throwing routine. Hey now! <laughs> and how do you become a de facto manager of a building? Per person who was owning the building just disappeared one day and everyone just started giving their rent money to me. So you know who you're paying with the rent money? You just kind of knew that off the top of your head? I shrug. Thankfully, when he left, he left his uh, accounting material behind, so I've been able to f gain access to the certain accounts that he se has seemed to pay into before. So far, no one's come knocking with a loaded gun demanding more money or making um, shady demands, so I'm okay with the current situation. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm Glyph. Nice to meet you all. Pleasure. 
here's your keys. You know, you're in room 212, or you're in room 212 down the hall. But for the time being, enjoy the view. It's not too smoggy today. Be careful not to get hit in the head with another soccer ball. Yeah, that happens. No, yeah, I wasn't actually aware they had a soccer field on that building. I know. I wonder what we could negotiate to see if we can go up there and play a few rounds. I'm going to have to reconfigure my legs if we're going to do that. <laughs> Maybe all of the power went from your arm into your leg and then kick it across the street all the way to the next skyscraper over. Hmm. Maybe. There's no telling with this equipment. <laughs> it's uh, right about then that, uh, Akari, uh, you get a buzz on your agent. All right. Uh, official ch official channel or unofficial? Both, interestingly enough. Well, this is going to be interesting. I'll, I'll um, hold it up to my face and activate the vid chat feature. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. On the other side of the screen, there is a familiar face. Well, two familiar face. You see the face of Kure Asa, and you also see the face of uh, Chief Cabarillo. And uh, Rio is behind uh, Kure, and Kure says, Ah, Kari, how's it going? Well, you know, just sitting back, enjoying the scenery, and waiting for the next job, which I'm guessing the waiting is over. Sort of yes, sort of no. Uh, this is both a courtesy call and an inquiry. Uh, I understand that uh, one of my older friends or acquaintances from the industry might have just checked in with you, or at least was supposed to anyway. I'm just going to side-eye glyph and she gets pivot, a little the, wave. pivot the agent so that, you know, glyph and Curie can actually look at each other. That's her. And uh, Curry smiles and says, oh, yeah, that's her. How you doing, Glyph? Hey, Curry. But yeah, uh, more to business. These people look nice enough. Ah, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're a treat. But uh, perhaps to business, since it seems the chief here is a little bit eager. Uh, we're going to stop by your apartment in about five minutes. Uh, do, you, do you have a meeting room of some sort? Yeah, we can throw the old, uh, or we can sweep the old pizza boxes off something. I mean, is it fresh-ish? As fresh as you can get in, uh, with our current pay grade in this city. Fair enough. Save me a slice of pizza. Okay. Make mental note. Find a slice of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, she uh, she cuts off the agent, uh, giving you time to do whatever. I need right. to hide some things if they're coming. And I'll bolt down. <laughs> Oh, so old, old friend. Glyph takes out to look at the key. Uh, yeah. Um, um. What room was I in again? Two twelve. Here's your keys. She takes the keys and she just kind of nods and then she looks and she goes, "Yeah, I'm an old friend of Carrie. I'm a musician as well. Well, producer, but yeah." Well, can't oh, be worse than make, the last person who was here. That's gonna make life a lot uh, less complicated and when I have to sneak around you. Is there any um, noise rules here? Don't be too loud or anything. I'm yeah, like... last rocker boy we had in uh, last rocker girl. We please try to keep it under 120 decibels after midnight. That would be appreciated. And no spontaneous expo no um, explosions or power tools without prior written consent, please. A written notice. I'm I gonna need say. that written consent then. Oh yeah. well, I need to give it to you. I'll get that for you. Appreciated. Um. And then, I'm just going to as airbags begins to wander off. I'm going to quickly flag him down. Hey. Uh, hey. So didn't want to make a scene with everyone coming, but I figured I should let you know. Remember a week ago, you and I were under your van trying to figure out where all this extra fluid was coming from. Uh, yeah? Yeah, um, I picked this out of one of the axle struts, and I hand him what appears to be a fairly well-worn police tracker. Not sure where it came from, not sure how long it's been on your vehicle, but, uh, please don't make a scene. 
Yeah, it'll just sort of, uh, sort of look at it, sort of. I I'm assuming you hand it over to him. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'll just sort of like look at it, sort of turn it over a, a couple of times, and then just sort of give a sigh and go, "Ah, oh, that's the cops for you." Yeah, just figured I'd let you know. Appreciated. And he'll pocket that for now. Alrighty. So, and with that as so Glyph, by the way, um we do part time work for the cops. Well, you know Kiri, so you're probably aware of the situation. However how far you wish to get into the organization, up to you. Um I'm here just for some new experiences, looking for inspiration for new music. I mean my own I have my own gigs, so I'm here just to help, learn, see what you guys can inspire me to create. Uh, usually we just seem to destroy, but hey, whatever suits your whatever suits your muse, and without that, without anything further, I'll turn on my heel and head back inside. Hey, hey I'll have you know that bus was almost in perfect condition when I left it. And things that are destroyed normally make great inspiration for music. The sound of metal being ripped apart classic <laughs> i think i'm gonna like this one <laughs> all right so we skip ahead just a little bit uh to you all more or less arriving at the entrance to the common room at the same time as uh your two guests curry asa and chief cabarillo now for those i realize because we have obviously new viewers and new players i should probably describe both curry and uh rio so curry asa is uh your typical rocker gal uh she used to be a very popular idol uh she has stark purple hair that comes down to her shoulders uh, it's done up in one of those side swept things where like uh one side of the head is just full length hair and the other side's more like a shaved or a shorter side uh, so there's a dichotomy there and she has uh, a very vibrant style of dress uh, more specifically she has uh, lots of neon blues lots of neon purples and pinks uh, even though she's not really in the idol business you can tell that she still finds fashion to be well fashionable uh, as for chief cabarillo uh, i don't think any of you have ever seen her in anything but her overcoat um, she has stark black hair um, always seems to have a cigarette or a cigar in her mouth. Um, her dress is very professional. Uh, it's sort of a, a tailored suit with an overcoat that has a furred white collar uh, around the neck. And uh, I would say if I had to give a height, uh, Curry Asa is about average height. Uh, the chief is actually taller than all of you. She's a quite tall individual at about uh, six foot five. Um, but they all arrive, you all arrive at the common room, and I would say that uh, there's sort of that awkward moment where you're like, no, you go first, no, you go first. Uh, but you all settle into the common room and start looking at each other in a sort of awkward silence as we play that game of who's going to speak first. Well, I've arrived. I'm here. Thank you, Kara. Thank you, uh, Chief. And uh, Curry smiles and uh, gives you a one of those sort of loving side hugs and says, it's been far too long since I've last heard from you. How are things? Things are going same as usual. Following's being a dick. And crowds are loving the music. Things are looking up. Everything now. Glyph gives her, returns the hug and then just kind of like gives her a little pat on the head and smiles. Very nice. <laughs> And uh, ch the chief coughs at this and says, right, well, I guess technically I'm not on the clock, so uh, speak candidly, but uh, I have some news regarding the whole incident from two weeks ago. What incident? Glyph asks, extremely curious, just kind of leaning on the table a bit. Yeah. Uh, that was the whole, uh, if you remember that hostage situation downtown? Um, I just got in recently. I know nothing about what's going on around here. Ex-foreign uh, minister, foreign was minister was driving around several hacked bodies. Uh, Steele here figured out who he actually was, and before we could properly arrest him, he got 
no, drilled from a sniper of unknown origin. We were there. Well, it wasn't pretty. We assumed we it was assumed a sniper. It. Yeah. And by, yeah, the, newspa- I, the newspapers are saying it was an inside job. And I get that he's an important guy and all, but can the press really, like, at least acknowledge that we saved tons of other people, or do they have to hyper-focus on the one casualty out of, like, 50 people? And the chief actually audibly sighs deeply at that and says, well, you know how the media are. You know, it doesn't matter how many people you save. The moment somebody dies, that's all they ever talk about. Ugh. And she, you know, lights a, a fresh cigarette, puts it in her mouth, takes a long drag, breathes out and says, right, so as you probably can guess, uh, my ass has been in hot water since that entire incident. Uh, I've had to be, I've pretty much had back-to-back meetings since pretty much 3 a.m. this morning. And side note, it's like 5, 6 p.m. Uh, and uh, every single meeting has been the typical, why did you let this happen? Why why weren't uh, your people blocking that entrance? Blah, 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 blah. And she kind of rolls her eyes and says, so, you know, things are going good. But uh, relevant for you all, I think I have a lead. One that I haven't shared with my superiors yet because of the nature of the lead. I was going to ask if there's any actual investigation into the cause of the mess rather than just finger pointing as to why it happened. Well, you know how it is. Everybody likes pointing fingers, but nobody actually likes doing investigative work. But uh, more to the point, and uh, she pulls out her agent, and she sort of does the swiping up motion, which I'm stealing from the expanse, and the hollow table uh, that you're all surrounding illuminates and projects an image of a fairly well-dressed gentleman Um, He seems to be of a Western descent, or at least he definitely looks uh, a lot more from the West than the rest of you. And he is wearing an immaculately tailored tuxedo. With the possible exception of airbags. Yeah, this is true. Airbags is probably the most Western among you. Um, But the gentleman that appears on the hollow table, uh, Chief Cabarillo says, This individual is someone of importance. Now, we don't know his actual real name. We simply know that he is known as the auctioneer. And he's important because the auctioneer is someone we've been following at the police department for better part of five years now. Uh, The auctioneer is, as you probably can guess, an auctioneer. He sells esoteric and very rare items. Now, why this is important is because apparently he is selling a data dump from a TMPD server. And I personally believe that this data dump might contain the answers we're looking for because what I've heard on the street, at least through my connections, is that this is a very important data dump for unknown reasons, and literally anyone and everyone wants to get their hands on it. Do you not have a backup or a copy anywhere? That's the funniest thing. When we went to check in on the authenticity of this data dump, we were able to determine that someone uh, using a rogue access code did perform both a dump and a wipe of the core section they're claiming to have. But we don't know who it was. We've certainly looked into it, but we don't know who it is. Mm, So a bit of a mystery box auction. Mm, Exactly. Well, this guy has James Bond villain written all over him, so... Hmm. Dastardly handsome, though. Exactly. That's where they get you. Mm. He's not that handsome, but yeah, James Bond. Mm-hmm. And the chief actually looks kind of lost and says, "I'm, I'm sorry, James Bond is is that a thing?" And she looks it's... like questioningly at the table, like she has no idea who James Bond is. It's an uh, older show. It's an older cl- movie. classic, like two D flick. Uh, like it, it, it's from like last set the, the previous century you know, it had golden. spies and like all this high tech it was like ahead of its time basically huh well i guess i'll have to catch that on the tubes then 
Uh, more to the point, though, uh, she basically throws up some more statistics, some more, you know, hollow imagery. So that's very impressive looking, you know, lots of, lots of little text floating next to the auctioneer, things like that. And she says, so good news, bad news, good news. Obviously, we know that this auction is taking place. Bad news. We don't know where and we don't know when. Well, I'll amend that. We do know an approximate le- when. We do not know the specific when. We simply know that sometime in the next three days, the auction is taking place. Oh, it's never simple, is it? Well, you know, if it was simple, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Simple as I'm guessing the job is to give you a time and a place. Well, your job is not only to get me a time and a place, but your job is to get into this auction and acquire this data dump by any means. I don't assume that means you're giving us the bucks to buy it. The uh, the chief kind of smiles and says, if you are able to figure out an approximate price and it is something I can acquire on short notice, I can probably get you a briefcase of something. I mean, do you have any record of previous auctions and, like, what general price range items would have ran? I do have a general list. The problem is, is that previous pieces have been things like a, uh, and she actually pulls up her agent and looks at the list. Uh, There's rare art pieces, stolen, I might add. There is the golden tooth from an important shogun. I don't know why anyone would want that, but apparently it was a collector's item. Uh, there was the cooked books of a Yakuza uh, triad. Again, I don't know why the Yakuza would ever let such a thing get out, but apparently he was able to sell it anyway. Uh, basically, a lot of things that... Do you have weapons? Uh, no, that's the interesting part, is that he has never sold anything resembling a weapon. Information's more powerful than weapons ever could be. And so when people like this are dealing business, they like to keep their specialty specific. Uh, I, it, it, it was a... Yeah, never mind. Personal interest in something that I used to have. Mm. I used to be a collector of uh, more... Uh, antique weapons and other things like that. Oh, antiques. I know that. Um, actually, about your uh, question earlier, if you need money for this, I could help. I could wire you some. Well, I, we have no idea how much it will cost. My only thought there was that if we can get the funds provided, we could just buy it back or, like, you know get it through the auction and not have to worry about any bloodshed or anything of the sort. I'll try to keep some close at hand so that we can do that. We can figure out who buys it and, like, get it off there. But depending on how popular, how you you make it sounds like it's a very important item to a lot of people so no matter who ends up getting it i'm sure that the other parties will probably try and pull their own thing to get it and if we like go ahead i'm saying is that if say you got you have for example you have group a and group b and group c all trying to bid for it group b gets it group a and c are going to try and kill group b to get it and then if a group a gets it then group c kills group a and etc and not only that, if we were to try to, say, rebuy it from one of them that purchased it, they'd only be selling it for more. It'd be easier than if we're going to try to purchase it to just get it straight from the source for what we can get it for. Also, It'll they be would cheaper make a copy way. at that point. We could also, if we can't find where it's being held, we could just copy the data and leave it in the auction and let it go if it's not too important and try and leave before anyone even noticed we're there. Obviously, if it's as important as Chief makes it sound to be, I think it'd be in our best interest to remove it from their hands altogether. Well, you don't want things that have confidentials just out there flowing around. Copying it and then leaving it? No, you should, if you're going to copy it, then you should remote destroy it somehow. Maybe, you know, once it gets in the hands of the unfortunate party, you know, just 
make a big make a bit of a show. And uh, the chief actually EMPs smiles at that. Oh, sorry, Bishop, go ahead. EMPs are easy enough to rig. Mm-hmm. And the chief sort of smiles and nods at all this and says, "Well, it uh, sounds like you all have an idea of where to go. Uh, I will pass on a few more details." Uh, but then I'm going to turn this over to you. Uh, this is not an official TMPD business, but it is obviously within our best interests at the force if you are able to acquire this. And let's just say that there is a discretionary fund I can use for rewarding you all if and when you pull through. Of course. Other question is, um, any particular preference of casualties or damages or lack thereof, etc. If this auctioneer if this auctioneer is a high value target of some sort if you wish us to do <laughs> anything, oh, I, I don't think we're going to be able him. to touch the auctioneer on this one well it's just if the opportunity ever arises do you wish for us to try and arrest him or well see that's the sticky part is obviously because we can we know his face we know what he looks like uh, you would think we would have arrest warrants and such on him, but the problem is, is we have nothing that sticks to him. I mean, if we did arrest him, he would just get out the next day, if not the next hour. We don't have anything solid to hold him on. See, this is where I'm asking if you have any preference of casualties, force, damages, etc. Well, let's put it this way. If you end up on the news or in a scream sheet, I'm going to be very cross with you. Understood. So I should probably keep it low, right? Definitely. Don't show my face much. I mean, that's probably a good angle you could play up some sort of an entertainment gig, but uh, details, I'll let you handle that. Uh, Kure, I'll wait outside for you. And Kure says, of course, Chief. And uh, unless anyone stops the Chief, she steps out. Chief. Chief. Oh, yes. We could. I just had an amazing idea. We could go full James Bond on this. Can you provide us with silencers for our pistol? She sort of rolls her eyes and says, No, I'm not going to provide you an illegal firearm. It's not a firearm, just an attachment. Yeah, same difference. And she she almost half laughs to herself as she steps out. Damn it. This I place is so really... uptight compared to the UK. I could uh, really the, put the, a the, taser the in your night face. City, yeah. Despite what the screen sheets say. I mean, I could rig your watch with a taser if you really want it. Might, you know, Wait. backfire and tase you instead. I've never really done that small detail work before, but... Which is why I am saying no uh, to that. here? Say again? Steel, you're from the UK? Yes. I loved the UK last time I went through there. Oh, it was just gorgeous. No, not really. It was a shit sad. Anyhow... Tasers? Yeah, and Curry just sort of looks around and says, It won't fix the people. Yeah. Curry. I didn't understand any of that. Yeah, I was going to say, we only cut about half of that. You were roboting something fierce. In fact, you know what? I'm going to try and uh, change server on us. Uh, let me change it real quick. So there's going to be a momentary disruption in voice. Let's see. We are currently on US East. I'm going to change this to US Central. Okay, we should be on a new server. Is everybody still with me? Hello. Yep, Yep. hello. Okay, hey. cool. All right, so if you would repeat yourself there, uh, Glyph. What did y'all last hear? Uh, something about you going through the UK and it being a shithole. Um, my next thing I would have said was to steal saying it's being rebuilt. Rebuild the people. Fair enough. Well, Kari stands up, eats the last of her protein paste pizza, and gets ready to head out and figures out what she can do. Mm-hmm. Uh, Airbags, do you by chance happen to still have the contacts with the purple tigers? My shady contacts have mysteriously all vanished once I got one of these badges. Can't imagine why. Uh, yeah, I think I'm still mostly in their good books. 
uh, maybe if we can shake, see if they can figure out where this auction is and then relay it to us for, I don't know, offer to pay another 10% for that car or something. Yeah. I do have one contact that's a friend of mine that may be able to help. I guess I could get a little bit ahead of myself. We probably should focus on finding the place first before we try and figure out how to do what we need to do when we get Yes. Got to start a, start with the when and the where, and we go from there. Mm-hmm. So I, I've thrown us on a theater of the mind map because this is sort of we go open-ended into how are you all going about tracking down where this auction is taking place? That's a good question. I will contact my fixer buddy. Your fixer buddy? Does he have a name? Uh, her name is Siren. Siren? So is it, a, is it a woman or a man, or you just don't know? It is a woman. It it's a woman. the person that I've spoken with before to help me get set up. Roger that. Uh, how would you usually go about contacting them? Would it just be an agent call? Would you meet them in person? I'd probably just call, or, well, mess, message them first to see if they're not in the middle of something. Okay. So you send off a, hey, are you available to talk type message, and... In response, your agent rings. Perfect. I'll pick up. What is it you need? Uh, information. Pro- need to talk in person, preferably. That's how you do these things. Well, depending on the information, uh, there might be value in meeting up. Uh, can you be more specific? Uh, have you heard of? Uh, have you heard of the uh, auctioneer? I may have. What is it you are looking for in particular? Where the auction is taking place. I want to get in there. I've, I've, I, 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 as you're aware, I'm a big fan of antiques and things. Let's have you roll a. I could see a value in either persuasion or conversation. So I'll let you roll either of those two. We'll take persuasion. Very nice, a 20. Uh, So your fixer friend, she thinks for a moment and says, I may have heard some details, but uh, I'm going to need a little something-something for my trouble. Uh, Of course, as always. You're not even going to haggle? I mean, we've done deals in the past. I imagine at this point you won't just screw me. (laughs) How wonderfully naive of you. But very well, I will be, quote-unquote, nice about it. I understand that you might have, uh, shall we say, interesting data of your own. Perhaps a certain value uh, item that regards a certain TMPD uh, bit of equipment, if you catch my drift? Yes. If you bring that data to the following location, we can make a swap. And she gives you a time and a date and a place. Is it within the three day? It is within the three days. It is literally probably about three hours from now. And you just have to go down the street, more or less. All right. um, I'll see you then. Hmm. And she, without another word, just cuts off the call. And I'll uh, find... Uh, Ikari and Xavier with the other. Okay. So while uh, Steel is doing her call, what are the rest of you doing? I'm thinking about going to the nightclub. Ooh, okay. Glyph is kind of, you know, just getting her stuff into her room, getting it all set up while they're all talking. She's just along for the ride at this moment. Gotcha. Uh, I tell you what, let's, uh, let's play that out with, uh, Xavier. So Xavier, um, you're going to the nightclub. If I understand your intentions, uh, you are specifically going to just get a lay of the land, get a, get a feel who the movers and shakers are, that sort of thing. Yep. And possibly get some information, but just kind of getting a feel for everything. Gotcha. Uh, do you have, uh, anything in human perception? Um, I was going to say, I have a local expert. I don't... No, I don't have anything really in human perception. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, looking at your sheet, you do have enough education that you at least have a two in human perception. Uh, yeah, while uh, I'm describing the nightclub, why don't you go ahead and roll me a human perception? And the way this works is, uh, Xavier, you've returned to one of the nightclubs you've frequented in the past, and like all nightclubs in Tokyo, it's uh, sort of a cramped affair, or at least smaller than a Western one. Um, lots of loud music, lots of dancing people, lots of liquor flowing. And as you sort of look around with a 13, um, you do notice that in one of the VIP booths is what is probably a unmistakable Yakuza member. And by that I mean is they have very prominent tattoos along their arms and they're wearing a lot of gold finery. Uh, you know, kind of the the typical I'm a mid-boss in the Yakuza type look. Um, and they seem to just be having a good time. They, of course, ha of course have a few floozies about them. Um, but you could conceivably go up and confront this gentleman. I'll pay for a couple of rounds of drinks for him before I go up to him. Very nice. And I do apologize, I do have to step away for about five minutes, so I think this is where we're going to take our break. So we will be back in about ten minutes, everybody. All right. Sounds nice. Nice. See you then. Okay.
All right, in that case, welcome back, everyone. Sorry about that uh, abrupt BRB, but we are back and we are live. Uh, so where we left off, uh, Xavier, you had just bought a round of drinks for the uh, Yakuza member you had singled out in the nightclub. Um, at this point, uh, the Yakuza member has actually waved you over to actually come sit with him rather than you just ordering him drinks from the bar kind of a thing. I'll come over and sit down with him. Yeah, he takes you a look up and down your figure and says, I don't think I've ever seen you around this place before. Uh, what's your name, kid? I go by Xavier. Xavier, eh? Weird fucking name, but hey, who am I to judge? So, uh, don't get me wrong, I enjoy free drinks and all that, but what is it you want? I was wondering if you could give me some information. Well, now that's interesting, because, uh, information always comes with a price. What is it you want? The word on the street is there's an auction happening. Hmm... And at this, he sort of strokes his chin and then sort of motions for his floozies to go elsewhere. Uh, so it's just you and him in the booth now. And he leans in and lowers his voice a little bit and says, Yeah, there's there's a few auctions going on. Which one are you looking for in particular? My mind just blanked on what the information I'm looking for. It's TPMD uh, server. Yeah. Uh, the auction with the TPMD server. Hmm... Yeah, I might have heard something. What's it worth to you? Well, quite a bit. What's your price? <laughs> and he just sort of folds his arms and leaves it open to the air, doing that annoying negotiating tactic where he never gives you a firm price. Can I look him up and down and see if, like, if he has any cyberware that looks like it needs repaired? You certainly may. Uh, why don't you roll me a basic tech here? Or let me let me think here. Is there a better skill for this? Uh, why don't we actually have you roll a perception here? I like basic tech better. <laughs> Most techies do. Yeah. Perception. A nine. Uh, would you like to use luck on that at all? Yeah, let's throw three luck into it. All right, for a total of 12, uh, with a total of 12, uh, good news, bad news. Bad news, he doesn't have any overt cyberware. But good news, you are able to pick up that his right eye is a cyber eye. I just look at it. So, judging by your cyber eye, you have some tech into you. I assume that you, uh, that needs repaired from time to time. I mean, I already got a guy for that. What uh, What is it you can offer that he doesn't? I have some access to some interesting cyberware. And he sort of unfolds his arms and leans in a little bit further. Go on. Well, as a consultant for um, some high-priority people, I have access to some stuff. What would you be interested in? Well, I've always wanted that uh, sort of, I don't know, I don't know what it's actually called. Uh, tech things, I, I don't do the whole tech things. I'm, a, I'm muscle. But uh, I, I've always wanted that, uh, that eye thing that shoots out like a, like a taser thing. Gotcha. Let me see what I can do to find you one of those. Would that be cost good enough for you? He thinks about it and says... Yeah, yeah, I think we could come to an arrangement. Uh, you install the thing, and as long as it works, I'll tell you what you want to know. Understood. Let me go contact some of my uh, contacts and see what I can come up with. Okay, so you step away. And uh, who is it you are calling in particular? I'll call Akari first. Okay. Kari, do see you if... pick up? Oh, yeah, I will. There's a sound of machinery going on in the background. Yeah, Xavier? Do you have any idea where I can get a cyber eye that shoots a taser? Uh, sorry, one second. Uh, there's a couple footsteps and the heavy machinery powers off. Now, could you please repeat that? Did you say taser? Yes. Oh, God. I When I said I could put that into a wristwatch, I was half joking. Um... 
Well, that's not my usual expertise. I mean, I could dismantle a taser and take out the diodes easily, the electrodes easily enough. I mean, we could try talking to the chief, see if the chief could get us what sh- what we need real quick. Obviously, your friend will would want it probably done like a professional piece. Correct, but if we can get a hold of it, there's some information about the auction we could get. All right. Well, this is one of those le- less I know the better. <sighs> let let me go see if um maybe Glyph and Curie could help. You do that, I'll contact the chief and see if she can find me something. Yeah, sure. I'll take off my um safety goggles and head down and bang on uh Glyph's door. Okay. It's gonna open through the boxes or whatever all behind her. She's holding a couple pieces of paper as you open as she opens it and she looks and she's like, Exactly the person I've been looking for. Here. She hands you the paper. Okay. They're going to be Everything from large-scale renovations, one to move walls, one to build, knock them down, build up sound stations, build up a little studio in here, everything. Are you look? Are you trying to turn this place into a karaoke bar? No, a sound studio, so I can make music. Oh, oh, a proper sound studio. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. Near as I can tell, none of these walls you're looking to touch our load bearing and based on what I know of the electrical code there is no electrical code or if there is one we don't follow it yeah okay I'll just Thank you. put big X's now that I've done this for you um, perhaps we can talk about um, you and Curie getting something for us remember we're trying to get some nice uh, stuff from the... We're trying to get a taser eye from the police undercover operations unit. And a I'm taser hoping eye? That, yeah, I know. I was surprised as well, but apparently they exist. I'll pull up an agent with the Shock Star 4... Or the Shock Gaze 4012. That's now the official name, the Shock yeah. Gaze. <laughs> the Shock Gaze. I kind of... I, I look at it and I'm like, how does it work? You just look at someone you just... Paralyze them in there. Huh? Uh, does some modifications to the tear ducts, apparently. Stores one of the electrodes in there, and then the other one is hidden behind a false pupil. Or false, yeah. And then if you blink a couple times, there's a two-second countdown, and then they launch with an effective range of ten feet. Oh, yeah, God. I don't... I don't want one either, but apparently this might be what we need for our to get information on this auction. So, you think you can call up your buddy Curie and see if maybe we can curry some favor? How much is it? Don't know. Black market tech. Um, you need official government sanction to use it, apparently. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. She's going to get out her agent and just, like, call up Kyrie. I like uh, standing right there. Glyph, how you doing? I'm guessing you need something. Um, she just kind of, like, looks over at, at Ikari, and then she kind of yeah. puts I'll it, like, send like the where we can and... both talk. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Hi, Kyrie. Um, just... Looking to see if perhaps going through you might lead us better results than the chief herself. We're looking for a shock gaze implant from the undercover operations unit. Hmm. She strokes her chin in thought and says, hmm. I didn't even know they made these things. Uh, yeah, I can ask a few people around here. I've got connections. Uh, when you need it, by. Um, an hour would be nice. Oh boy. Uh, okay, I will call you back immediately. Bye, Carrie. Yeah, she hangs Thanks. up. And uh, maybe about five minutes pass, and uh, you get a call on your agent from Curie again. This is Akari. Hey, Curie here. So, good news, bad news, good news. Uh, 
was able to find someone who might have a spare uh, shock gaze. Bad news. Uh, you would have to come down and explain why you need it over another operative. Okay. Right. One sec. I am. I put Kiri on hold and then access the other line call Xavier. Okay. I hit. I hit my agent. This is Xavier. I imagine a big thudding bass in the background. Mm-hmm. Um, just imagine that Ikari is trying to shout over whatever the heck is playing in the background. Yeah, you need to apparently head down to the station and make your case to the director of undercover operations. But yeah, we can get it. Understood. I'll head that way. Right. And I'll hang up on him, get back to um, Kira and go, all right, Xavier's heading in. All right. I will expect to see him shortly. And while all that's going on, Bishop, I think you were going to try the Purple Tigers. Yeah. So uh, are you going to actually go to their, uh, their I, I hesitate to call it a hideout, but it's just, you know, an old warehouse. Um, would you actually be going to the warehouse or would you just have one of them come meet you somewhere? I'll probably have one of them come meet, meet me and unless they're unless I already know they're fine with me turning up well unannounced. Yeah. So uh, you know, you managed to wrangle one of the uh more respectful members of the Purple Tigers. And uh they say, uh Sobas, uh what's uh what what do we owe the honor of? Uh really appreciate your help and insights, by the way. Yeah, no, you, you got some good people. They're just, you know, lack, lacking the know-how that comes from a couple of decades on the road. Yeah, fair, fair. Uh, we should have that car ready for you shortly, by the way. Uh, we're just waiting on a few key parts. Excellent, excellent. Hey, uh, you heard about this uh, auctioneer fellow that's uh, com- coming to town to this one? Auctioneer fellow? Uh... I don't know, boss. I mean, offhand, I know that there's a few car auctions going on that uh, we could probably try and snag some new frames for. Uh, no, no, this is, this is more like a sort of a high-profile stuff, like selling off stolen artwork and so on. Like, huh. uh, a- any, like, do you know of any of the, like, uh, like want any of the larger gangs in the area that are, like, getting together resources for, like, a big purchase or something? Well, I don't know personally, but I know the guy who would, and he pulls out his agent. Apparently, we're playing phone tag today. He <laughs> yep. pulls out his agent, and he calls uh, a friend. He says, hey, Tommy, Tommy, how you been? And Tommy's like, yeah, I, w- w- what do you want, Joe? And Joe's like, all right, so Tommy, check it. Boss here wants to know if you know about any special auctions going on, like bigwig type shit. And Tommy kind of rolls his eyes and says, yeah, I know of one or two. Uh, can you be more specific? Uh, possibly selling some stolen server data. Hmm, stolen server data. Yeah, yeah, I think I know the one. Uh, you looking to, uh, I don't know, pinch something? I mean, if, if you reckon you can, then sure. Like I, I was just looking for information, but if you, if you if you think you can steal something out from under them, well, I don't think I could do it personally. But uh, let's just say I know a guy, and uh, my guy knows another guy, and so on and so forth. I uh, if I know the auction you're talking about, uh, there's only one way in or out of the hotel they're holding it in. Oh uh, yeah, and. Uh, Let's just say uh, with a little roadblock, you, you might be able to get what you're looking for at a uh, finger discount, if you know my, what I'm saying. I think i pick up what you're putting down. Awesome. I'll sort of like go to Tommy. So, uh, feel like a bit of uh, traffic... Traf- ah, what's the... Out of character, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, traffic manipulation? Yeah, fancy doing a bit of uh, traffic management, uh, sort of get people going down the roads we want them to go down yeah yeah i think we yeah, can make that, that happen basically what he's meaning is like get get some of the purple tigers up to like 
block traffic and strategic places to like give them an avenue to sneak into the hotel. Yeah. And he says, yeah, I, I, I can make that happen. Just tell us where you need us, boss. Well, do. All right. I'll get back to you with the details. All right. So it's at this point that, uh, Xavier, you've arrived at TMPD and you're in front of the uh, head of undercover operations. Uh, it is the stereotypical pencil pusher, uh, Japanese salary man, little balding, kind of slightly messed up suit. He's obviously been in the office for far too long today. And uh, he just kind of looks exasperated when you come in. He says, ah, yeah, so let's let's just cut to the chase. Uh, why do you need this implant? To get information on the auction that currently uh, we are trying to get a hold of the stolen server data. I hadn't heard anything about stolen server data, but uh, okay. Uh, so you, you want it to get information. Uh, do I want to know who this is being used for, or is this one of those things I don't want to know about? The less you know is better. Why don't you roll me a persuasion, please? 16. All right. Uh, tell you what, go down to requisitions and uh, I'll have it waiting for you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and... To be fair, uh, it's not going, and, uh, to, be fair, it's not going to go to anyone who could effectively use it in a terrorist capacity. Mm-hmm. And uh, on your way out, the the requisition or the uh, the head says, "Yeah, just uh, I was no you you. This meeting never happened." Agreed. And yeah, sh you know, skipping forward just a tiny bit, you get the implant. You return to the nightclub, and uh, it's in one of those like marketing boxes where it's lots of flashy colors, lots of shock gaze nine thousand, yada yada yada. Um, and uh, the yakuza guy says, "Ha." Huh, I thought you were just joking, joking around. I didn't think you'd actually get the shit for me. I never kid around. So you're uh, Xavier, right? Indeed. Cool. So uh, do we do this here? Do we do this somewhere else? We can do it here. Although it would probably be better to do it in a place where I have more tools. Yeah, let's do it here. All right, right. Yeah, just field surgery in the middle of the nightclub. This doesn't strike me as very hygienic. Ah, probably not. But hey, it's cyberpunk. What are you gonna do? Yeah. All right. So go ahead and roll me a basic tech. Uh, I am going to impose a minus three uh, penalty because you are doing it in the middle of a nightclub. I just have to ask: Is there gonna be an eye puller? Uh, well, I mean, he already has a cyber eye, so... Yeah, it's, it's more just installing a module. It's not, like, actually playing out the okay. full eye. Okay, I there. just lean backwards and... <laughs> <laughs> so, minus Apply three... suction on... cups. Mm -hmm. <laughs> minus three on my modifier. I'm going to throw three luck... Or... Let's throw five luck into this. Five luck into it, all right. A 16. A 16 is more than enough uh, to succeed here. And yeah, you install the cyber eye, no problem. And uh, there's even a very noticeable high-pitched hum when the uh, diodes connect to the uh, capacitors that you've installed. And of course, the hum dies down very quickly, but uh guy blinks a few times and he says, huh, yeah, I'm seeing an overlay now that uh, all I have to do is squint a little bit. Uh, thanks, kid. Uh, and he, he sort of offers his hand out. Uh, my name is uh, Kaze Izo. Pleasure to meet you. Cool. So, uh, yeah, this auction you were wondering about, it's uh, its actually happening at the, the Hilton Hotel right in the middle of Tokyo. Makes sense. Plain right in the center. Easy to access. In plain sight. And, uh... I don't mean to stiff you or anything, but uh, I only know vague details about when the actual auction's taking place. I think it's tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is a good enough information. We can go off from that. Thank you, sir. Sure, and uh, if anybody asks, uh, I didn't give you this information. Understood. If anybody asks, you didn't get the eye from me? Sure, sure, kid. Any wings with the eye you just, you know. I stand slightly to the side. Yeah. 
So it's at this point that uh, we're just going to do a quick get-together scene where you all share the information you've gathered thus far. Yeah, basically, Airbags is going to come back and say, okay, I know the spot, and I can, like, block off the other auctioneers from arriving for a bit if we know when to do it. And during, after the, after uh, Steel made the call, she's just been uh, taking the, she took, uh, she made a copy of the data from, for the, for the stuff that she's agreed on, but has been trying to comb out and delete a, any mention or any inclusion of the parts about the the eye system built mm -hmm. into this. Just leave the core suit and mechanics of that. Gotcha. And yeah, uh, I would say that uh, the information you got from your fixer friend is the time that you were looking for. The time is 9 p.m. Um, this day or the, like the next day? The next day. And so we we came together and they basically all told it or we already know? I mean, yeah, it's a, you know, there's sort of a brief scene where you all come together. You all communicate the information you've learned. So you have the time, the date and the location. So now it's... Oh, go ahead. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's... if you gotta have, a, if you gotta have a auction, do it in style. But well, hmm. and easily accessible in relative plain well, sight. Oh, not for long. I have the purple tigers can help with that. Have if you, actually... if you, how are you planning on preventing the other? You're just going to prevent the auctioneers, correct? include some civilians in this because that would be an issue let's just say that tokyo's uh, tokyo's uh, street grid has some key choke points in it okay um uh speaking of and uh airbags will go to ikari or whoever is who's nearest who's like the person who contacts the public Pro uh probably Ikari or Xavier? Yeah, one of us. Yep. Yep, so everybody's go to you guys and say Okay, so uh one last thing. Uh, can you let can you let the chief know that if they get reports of the purple tigers like causing problems and like holding up traffic tomorrow night, just to just sort of put that on a low priority until after about 9.30. We'll pass the information along. Can do. So we got the time and place. Uh, did anyone actually try and look into getting invites to the event? If it's at the Hilton, I can try something. Because that would make it a lot easier than having the sneaker way in. Actually, yeah, like, if we can get into position, like, well before, so that we're already in the hotel. Um, I, I like I said, I can try. Yeah, I would say that, uh, Glyph, you, based on your, you know, schmoozing in the area, you might know uh, a friend of a friend that could help you here. Why don't you okay. roll me a... Let's call this a local expert. So roll me a local expert here. Fourteen. Yeah, you know a uh, individual by the name of Yabe Han, and you know that uh, he runs the entertainment uh, booking for the Hilton. I can try. If you want me to, I'll try. I know someone that can help. Go for it. Okay. I'm gonna like step away to go make a phone go call Yabe. Okay. So you call him up and he says, This is the Hilton, how may I help you? Yabe, it's Glyph. Um, I have a favor. Alright, what's this favor? There's an event being hosted. That we need to be in position to stop the type of event you wouldn't want getting out that your hotels being a uh, whole um, hosting. Roll me, because this could be a persuasion. This could be a bribery. Uh, I'm gonna say a persuasion, but I'm gonna impose a minus three penalty on it. 
which is, I think, better than your bribery. You can always spend luck as well. Mm -hmm. many points you got. Trying to find the persuasion on the sheet real quick. Give me a second. I'm going to expend four luck. Okay. For it. Oh, very nice. An 18. Uh, the good news is that uh, Yabe doesn't take it as a threat, but more of a heavy allusion to, you know, maybe it's in his best interest to go with you. And he says, yeah, yeah, I know the event you're talking about. Uh, let me guess, you uh, you want me to book you? How many people are here again? Five, right? Yeah, there's yeah. five of you. Yeah, um, me, a guest, and some guards. Can you be a spe more specific on the numbers? Oh, five. Five, I five. see. Uh, yeah, show up around uh, 6 p.m. and we'll get it all sorted out. Now, which one of you can clean up the best? <laughs> asking the group? Yep, asking the group. She turns back to the group and just asks that. She doesn't say anything else. She just asks that. Uh, by clean up the best, do you mean dress and that's yeah yeah i'm quite glad i mean i honestly thought things. she meant hide a body no not hide a body it... she looks at steel and she goes you're in then i said oh I... two guests myself and my well myself and my guests and bodyguard she just see you so you don't have to think you don't have to what there? The best. Sorry, we had a bit of cross like there. So they don't have to what? You cut off there at the end. Uh, hide anything. Gotcha. That's probably the best choice as well, because my body weight suit's probably the easiest to hide under a dress and other clothing as well than what these are all wearing. Okay. So, what do you think? I got us in. Beautiful. Nice. All right. Let, we have the time. We have the place. We have the inn. We have the distractions. Mm -hmm. Should we do any scouting out of the location beforehand? I mean, yeah. that's why we're going early. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Oh. And uh, at a character, I'm assuming the plan is to once we're confident that everything's blocked off and they won't arrive, we wait until the auctioneer comes out with the thing and then we do a smash and grab? Uh, the plan is to sneak in and uh, get access to the thing without alerting or killing anyone, preferably. Uh, I would I would suggest we take part of the auction itself. Uh, yeah. Backup plan be smash and grab. First yeah. plan be me and Steel sit in the audience and we actually partake in the auction. Well, My paycheck, of course. Glyph. Maybe just maybe Glyph try and stay to buy it, steal, because plan B, if we can't buy it, or if it's like, you know, a ridiculous amount of money that we can't afford or something, then plan B would to, for us to sneak in to, and steal can uh, wipe bits, wipe all the data from it and just fill it with dummy data and just yeah. leave the box. Uh, now then, uh, do we want the traffic jam to be, to prevent auction auctioneers from arriving or from preventing them from leaving? Definitely. Oh, leaving. Definitely leaving. Yeah. Um, also, we should... Well, the bodyguards won't be allowed in the room, most likely, during the auction. So you guys have some spare time to do other things, like set up positions or get some things going while the auction happens. Yep, we can do that. Can do. Alrighty. So, uh, we're going to skip ahead just a little bit, and there's sort of a montage sequence of everybody getting in their finest duds. And uh, you all arrive at the Hilton the next day. Now, the Hilton oh, is... Uh, uh, point, point of order, Airbags yes. has left the transponder at, at his flat. Okay, I figured as much, but good note. Um... So the uh, the Hilton, at least as far as I understand it, is uh, one of the taller buildings in the Tokyo area. 
um, simply because it is, again, based on my research, which could be completely wrong, uh, it is one of the larger hotel chains. Uh, but uh, relevant for you all, when you walk in, uh, there is uh, Yabe Han waiting for Glyph, and uh, Yabe uh, sort of waves Glyph and the entourage over and says, Ah, you're here early. Good, good, good. Uh, you are expected up at the penthouse. Uh, go ahead and get set up and uh, enjoy the show. Well, you know what I mean. Thank you, Yabe, once again. If you ever need anything, feel don't don't be afraid to ask me. Hmm. Let's just say you're doing this pro bono. I ain't paying you tonight. Wait, what? <laughs> and he walks away, leaving you in confusion. I give him uh, I give a small bow as he leaves, but I'm also just looking around, scanning for any points of anywhere I could possibly find access to the building's network. Yeah, there's uh there's a lot of uh, entrance points, you know, basic sort of hotel uh, intranet type thing. Um, but you would probably know just local area knowledge that the penthouse is probably on its own thing. Yeah. Is it is the auction in taking place in the penthouse then? Yes. Okay. And yeah. All right. Uh, Gly Glyph. Not oh, you, you cut out again. Out there, buddy. Ah, he's still cut out. I think I know what they're they're going for. Okay. Uh, so while they're doing that, um, Carrie is going to do her best to blend in with the staff. Mm -hmm. um, she's dressed up in a fairly standard style of uh, dress. So like vest, long pants, uh, sort of like a hotel staff outfit mm -hmm. and with luck she is able to sort of blend in and work the work the tables there okay I'll stick with glyph at uh, as they, we go up okay so for those I think who... I'm back yes you are okay um, um, glyph is gonna try to find information what's going on in the penthouse because she's now wondering what she's doing. Okay. Um, you just know, at least based on the people you're asking, that uh, you are the entertainment for the evening. She kind of just gives a very big smile, a big nod. She looks to uh, she, uh, uh, Xavier's who stuck with me, right? Mm -hmm. She looks at me and she goes, You want to see a show? Well... I think I'm going to see a show regardless of whether I want to or not. So let's see what you got. Right. So we uh, skip ahead Steel. just a tiny bit. Yeah, Steel is going to try and find... Steel is going to hang out a bit and try and watch where Akari goes, blending with the staff, but also just watch where staff goes and is trying to find like wherever a maintenance room would be, basically. Gotcha. All right. Uh, so... You all arrive at the top floor where the penthouse is. And yeah, there's a few uh, side offices, a few side maintenance rooms. Uh, but what you're noticing is that the moment you step out of the elevator is that there is not only a large number of suited gentlemen uh, with earpieces in, but all of them are carrying what appear to be light SMGs in the open, which if you need a reminder, uh, you're not supposed to have firearms in Tokyo or really in Japan at all. So the fact that they're open carrying really speaks to the volume of influence they have. Um, but the penthouse itself is sort of open. The, do the double doors are open. You can kind of see beyond into a dark uh, tinted room that's open. Uh, there are probably about 10, 20 people already inside schmoozing. Um, what you can see is that there are various uh, high bits of art on the wall. Uh, there is a stand-up bar where drinks are being served. Uh, there's various couches and other bits of uh, furniture that are all very high class, very uh, ritzy, as it were. And uh, when you step out of the elevator, uh, one of the guards wielding the SMGs kind of turns and says, uh, Yeah, who might you be? Glyph, the entertainment, and my entourage. 
puts a finger to his ear. Says, yeah, you're cleared through. Go ahead. And he waves you through. So just so that we have everybody who's here. Glyph, you're here. Xavier, you're here. Uh, who else is in this group? The rest of us yeah. are like the bodyguards, right? <laughs> right. But Akari broke off. Yeah, and... I broke off. Yeah, I think we all are except Akari then. Okay, so if everybody is here but Akari... And we'll get steel, and we'll get airbags. There we go. All right. So uh, you all begin setting up, or at least maybe giving the facade of setting up. When uh, you all would like, uh, let's do it this way. Why don't you all roll me a perception here? All right. If we're setting up, is it? Like oh, for crying out loud! Really, really, <laughs> Scotty? <laughs> really? <laughs> Another one. Yeah, and I have no more left to be able to throw. Basically, I just got a plug in, so like, it's cool. Like, she, the setup is just for the uh, distraction. Right. Is there, yeah. a, is there like a stage area though? Um, there's sort of a uh, a raised bit of uh, platform next to the window, which is probably where you'll perform from. Um, but with a sixteen, a seventeen, and a twenty, uh, everybody but Xavier is going to notice a very prominent gentleman uh based on what you saw before it is none other than the auctioneer in what looks to be the same tuxedo uh as the picture you saw and uh the only real difference is that his hair is maybe a little bit more gray and that his goatee is a little bit more pronounced but he's he's walking about schmoozing uh you know having conversations with the people who are here and i would say with uh that level of success on airbags uh airbags you know, maybe you weren't always knowledgeable about high class, but just the very air these people are breathing, it's way out of your element. Like, these are very influential and very important people. Yeah. <laughs> He's very much concentrating on just keeping his head down and not drawing attention. Which is a good thing, because the more you look around, the more you realize that there are some very big power players here. Uh, you're pretty sure that that short woman in the corner, she's probably the daughter of the CEO of Arasaka. That one over there, uh, the gentleman that's talking to another one in the corner, opposite corner, uh, he's more than likely the uh, heir to one of the prominent businesses in the Tokyo area. And, you know, it just goes down the line, just more important people, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so I, don't know, I imagine Amex is going, oh, hell, I recognize who these people are. Mm-hmm. Steel is going to start kind of having a little bit of a panic attack, is going to try and run off and is trying to find whatever she finds, whatever find first, a maintenance room, like a any, like a fucking janitor's closet, the bathroom, just anywhere to hide. Well, I could give you the bathroom, sure. All right. Oh, uh, wait, is Glyph's going to look over it, like, is still panicking when she's moving away? There's I mean, there's definitely like a haste in her step. Let's gonna kind of like pull her off for a moment and just kind of goes, "Calm down. Stop. What's wrong? I, I just need to find an access point. I just let me. I don't know. Check the bathroom first. Hold on a see. moment here. These bathrooms are probably watched. They're probably not the most comp. Like this place is definitely not." easiest point so don't go don't go walking in a haste okay well, keep you, it calm you gotta set up go Adele. just let me do my thing you do your thing okay um good luck Glyph is gonna go back to setting up quotation marks mm -hmm. and uh Akari while they're all doing that uh you found your way into the kitchens we'll say and uh, they are indeed preparing uh, hors d'oeuvres and other sort of uh, bits for the soiree that's going on upstairs. And uh, one of the uh, chefs in the area says, hey, you, girl, uh, you, whoever the hell your name is, look, grab that plate and take it upstairs. Yeah. Just a quick nod. Grab the plate of hors d'oeuvres and I head and I follow the other entourage upstairs. Okay. So I'm actually going to move you guys over here next to the window. 
But uh, pretty much at about the same time as Akari, you arrive with your d'oeuvres and begin, you know, circulating the room. Uh, Glyph, you maybe are just ready to start playing when uh, the auctioneer holds up a glass and does the tinking thing. And uh, silence falls over the room and he says, Welcome, ladies, gentlemen, and everything in between. Uh, This is, of course, my auction tonight. And tonight we have a very special item up for sale. The bidding will start at, and he says a number that is so large that all of you would immediately feel the most inadequate you've ever felt in your entire life. Including me? Including you. Oh. And the uh, the auctioneer, you know, of course, there's there's some murmurs, but for the most part, they're very positive murmurs. There's not like, oh, he means that much. How dare he kind of thing. They're like, oh, yeah, that's a reasonable price. And the auctioneer says, as you all know, I hold things in a silent auction type deal. You have until, he looks at his watch, 30 minutes from now to get your bids in. And of course, if you have any questions about the authenticity, I am willing to show you it or at least verify such. Enjoy your bidding. And then he sort of motions for Glyph to begin playing. Glyph is going to kind of, she's going to plug in. She's going to start playing like, she's. No, I think you you cut out again. We lost you again. Oh, hi. Sorry, am I good? Yeah, you're good. Yep. Um, uh, She's going to start playing some of her Santa songs she made in the past, along with one or two of her current ones. Just putting on a uh, playlist of them, basically, as she plugs in. Acting like the part of, like, DJing it and actually performing it. But she's looking around the room a bit more, trying to take in faces. And at the same time, she's going to, like, have one hand, like, text the group. Look, uh, we're going to have to change up the plane here. Yep. I nod. Um... Ikari is going to, uh, as soon as Ikari runs out of her d'oeuvres, um, mm-hmm. I'm going to apologize profusely, leave the room, head back down to through the server. I'm assuming there's the service lift somewhere. Yeah. And I want to take note of any place that might, between here and there, that might look particularly guarded. Roll me a uh, perception here. All right. Oh, that's persuasion. Where is it? human perception? That's not it. Um, there it is. Um, I'm going to add two points of luck to this. Okay. Ooh. And a critical success, which means you get a grand total of twenty. Uh yes. Two, you... Actually, but yes. Ooh, nice. Uh, so you actually see that there are two uh particular rooms that are being guarded. Um, there is one of the offices uh, on the same level as the penthouse. But interestingly, uh, on the same level as the kitchen, there is another room that is probably another office or at least a meeting room of some sort that is also being guarded by the same sort of open carrying gentleman that you saw upstairs. Hmm. All right. Duly noted. Um, I will head back down to the kitchen, sh- grab the next order of tray, mm-hmm. and I'll figure out what I do while they, f- while the other guys do their thing. I am in the bathroom. I was trying to find if uh, hopefully if there was any like a access point in here or like a back panel in the stall or something would be the best situation. Uh, let's see. Why don't you run me a? Uh, let's have you do an interface check here. A scanner check. Something along those lines, yeah. Hey. Total of 20, very nice. So, good news, bad news. Bad news, there's not really any access terminals or interface ports here in the bathroom. Uh, But the good news is that it seems that the penthouse has its own network, which means that you don't have to go through the entire hotel. You can literally just go straight through the penthouse. But you would have to go probably out into the main area. And uh, ironically enough, it's probably right behind where Glyph is set up, where the access terminal is. Where the interface port is, anyway. 
I will make my way back over there and just I'll I'll act like I'm I'll act like I'm setting up with Blip and like trying to run the systems and shit. Okay. And looking at the time, uh, I think that is where we're going to end today's session, and we're going to make this a two-parter. Alrighty. So thank you guys so much. Hopefully you guys had fun. Uh, this is where I'm going to kill the stream, so Twitch, YouTube, etc., etc. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we will see these uh, lovely people next week. Bye, stream. Bye.